G'day fellas and welcome to a very special casted game. Spawning in the south of the map, playing as the Rus in the color blue, we have got Famut the Great. I'm assuming that that is all of his name because it just says Famut the Great dot dot dot. And I'm assuming that is his actual name and there's no extra part after the Great. So maybe he's not confident in himself. Maybe Famut doesn't think he is the Great. Maybe he was born as Famut the Great. Maybe that was the name passed upon him from his father. And uh, maybe he's like, I am Famut the Great dot 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 dot. Oh, I'm not really that great. I don't know how great he is, but we'll definitely be looking forward to seeing how great he is because he is going up against one of the greatest of all time. If you are a fan of Age of Empires 3, you will be no stranger to this man who spawns in the north side of the map. Playing as the English in the color red, it is the one and only Hazza. And he is looking to take control of this game by storm, already opening up with an early mill. Now, keep in mind, we are on the brand new patch where the English have got access to a whole bunch more wood. And Hazza decides he's going to spend it on his mill. Now, for anybody unfamiliar with Hazza, he was one of, I, I say one of, the best uh, Age of Empires 3 player. Uh, I'll go, I'll, I'll say it. He was the best Age of Empires 3 player that ever lived. Uh, many people considered him to be stronger, better, faster, prettier than any Age of Empires 3 player before him. That includes people of the likes of I Am Grunt. That includes people like H2O. Many people say that Hazard at his peak was able to beat absolutely anybody playing Age of Empires 3. Now, the question is whether he's going to be able to translate those skills and take them into Age of Empires 4 as he looks to transition slowly but steadily into the community of Age of Empires 4. Despite it being a larger community, Hazza is intent on leaving his mark upon the game and will he be able to take out his first potential conquest? It is Famut the Great. And that's what we're going to be finding out today. How great is Famut? Three scouts heading towards his opponent's base. I mean, Famut's rank 66. So I've got to be honest with you guys. Famut's doing pretty damn well. He's doing a lot better than me. I think at the moment, I'm sitting at like rank 700. No, nah, I'm just kidding. It's like rank 800. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that was loud. I apologize, dudes. I apologize. That was probably pretty loud. Uh, no, nah, I'm just kidding. It's like rank 900. But seriously, uh, don't look me up. It's pretty embarrassing. But uh, <laughs> hey, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it here. I'm working on it here. Famut is sitting at rank 66. So that's pretty nice. Hazza 382. Uh, so coming into this, you would definitely assume Hazza a little bit of an underdog in this scenario. Uh, but these two players are going to be fighting it off. And Hazza might needs to be careful. Hazza going for a little bit of a sheep delivery. Not the best type of delivery. But Famut says, you know what? Don't worry about the sheep delivery, mate. I'll let you keep the scout. And uh, Hazard did open with a double scout opening. So he's looked to deny plenty of hunt away from his opponent. You can see he's done a great job of cleaning this hunt up towards the north. But at the same time, Famut, 240 bounty at the moment. And he's got plenty more bounty where that came from. Three deer going to be... Or three deer. Three, uh, three wolves going to be chasing him in. And he's got plenty of sheep here. Not yet to receive that sheep delivery. But who knows? Maybe one day he will receive it as Harry. Harry, a.k.a. Hazard, a.k.a. H, uh, is heading back towards his base but now we see Famut the Great looking to go for the Golden Gate in the center of the base uh, he's got that beautiful elephant uh, that is quite the nice monument I gotta be honest with you guys if you're ever into monument hunting and all that kind of stuff elephant monuments they're kind of the meta they're kind of the meta elephant monuments some consider them to be the best I would I would definitely agree with that but Famut doing a great job here of rounding up the early Gaia here he's gonna be very happy 315 of that bounty. The question is whether he goes for a boar. Now, going up against the English, it can always be a bit dangerous going for a boar in the center of the map, just because the English are very typically going to be coming out with longbowmen, spears, battering rams, all that sort of good thing. And longbowmen do so very well against wooden fortresses, just typically because the range on the wooden fortress isn't the greatest. And longbowmen have got seven range. So we'll look to see how he plays, but already found out the great positioning. A scout in the position in front of the boar. I think Hazza thinks that the boar might be up and we'll see exactly how he looks to play. Only three villagers are going to be going away on the council hall. What kind of upgrades are we seeing coming out from Harry? It looks like a, no, no wheelbarrow coming out from Harry, despite an early mill being open. So kind of a bit of a head scratcher here. I'm going to be honest with you, Hazza. Let's see how Famut the Great looks to play it, though. Wooden Fortress coming out on the wood line here. He is really looking to secure things up at the same time. Another scout going to be coming out from Hazza on that western side. Scout going to be moving back towards the base of Famut at this point. And Famut the Great is definitely looking pretty darn good at this point. No wheelbarrow coming through for him. No professional scouts at this stage. Four idle villagers. It does manage to clean it up now. Got his sheep a little bit far away from the town center. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Ideally, you'd like to have them right in underneath, tucked away. Stable now going to be coming in for him. 
So we'll look to see how Famot plays, but Hazard reaching the feudal age as well. Famot doing a great job of scouting out Harry, exactly what he's up to. Does see that there is indeed some sort of longbowman that is going to be made here. And I guess he'd never expect it coming out against the English. He's going to spot the gold. No villages on the gold. I guess to me that indicates that we are just thinking about an exclusively feudal age play. Uh, but, you know, when would you expect English not to go for that? By the same token, you'd always expect like one or two villages to be out here, whether it is for, you know, th those early upgrades, like the English love to go for an early wheelbarrow, an early uh, plus one ranged attack, an early plus one ranged armor, an early siege engineering as well, but not going to be the case coming through for Hazard today. And Famut spots that. And oh my lord. I thought I saw those hands doing a little bit of doing a little bit of high riding there but it wasn't the case and look at hazard just sitting on that boar he is like mate you're, you're not taking this boar if you think you're taking this boar i'm gonna aggro it and i'm gonna kill all your villagers with it but we'll see how hazard does it as he continues to build up units actually just gonna be sending them to the back of his base so not looking for any aggression at this stage in the match and now we see an archery range a second archery range gonna be coming out and keep in mind there was a double broad axe that did come in from famot the great so you can see he is looking to go absolutely ham no wheelbarrow though coming in from famot the great kind of weird not gonna lie um, uh, normally you would want a combo wheelbarrow with that double broad axe. It just enables so much more effective gathering of those resources because you can see the, the travel time that's coming out from these villages. Let's count it for a second. Come on, well, let's do some counting with Drongo. This little guy here. He's going to get to 8, 9, 10. Here we go. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> you bloody bastard. Look at that villager. It, decided, it got to 9 and it's like, I'm going to chop this tree now. <laughs> you gotta love it you gotta love it that's all right he's got 10 uh we would have counted it but we're, we're not particularly good at counting but you, you guys can appreciate that this is a very long distance to be walking he does put down the second lumber camp gonna be minimizing his walking distance now uh but at the same time we do see in the center of the map that there may be a bit of a boar fight beginning to break out as fam of the great appears to be chasing down the scout of harry or hazard as he is more affectionately known by his friends and co-workers but uh mill in this position he's managed to add in one two three four five six seven eight farms still yet to add that ninth farm in but uh, could be looking to do it now a bit of a spearman mass beginning to build as well for harry and uh he's going to be looking to add in more longbows and really just stick to that classic english composition of spearman longbow not really paying attention here he's got to be careful that scout coming in just for a bit of a kiss just a bit of a love tap saying g'day fellas Gave him a kiss and then just got out of there. Scout now just going to be resetting its position. I like that Hazard's just ignoring this scout. Just letting it scout. It's like, yeah, you can tell him. You can tell him I'm coming. He he is uh, He's going to be in for a rude shock, though. I mean, not really. He knows that you're coming. Wooden Fortress going down, though. Hazard doesn't actually see it. He's got his scouts out of position, unfortunately. So but by the time he gets there, that Wooden Fortress is going to be well and truly up. The question is, where is that boar? The boar is dead at the base of the wooden fortress. And now we see archers beginning to move out as well. Hazza looking to try and take control. And Famut the Great, with a couple of idle villagers there, going to be able to get inside garrisons with that wooden fortress. But now Hazza going to be turning his attention back towards his base. Where is that blacksmith, Hazza? I need, I can smell it. There's going to be there's going to be any second. There's going to be a siege engineering coming out from Hazza. Let's see how he responds to it, though, because he's going to be going up against a very strong economy of his opponent. Now, we still don't have that wheelbarrow coming in from Famut the Great. So you really got to start questioning the greatness of Famot because uh, if he is going for the Guz build which he is he's definitely skipped on the wheelbarrow and that's definitely not the part that you would want to skip it, especially eight minutes into the game Blacksmith now going to be going down for Famot the Great and he is beginning to push out with a couple of archers but keeping them all in the same control group and turns them around and as a result they all move forward before they move back so a little bit of a mistake but that's okay Famot's working on it don't worry that's probably why he's got the dots in his name and uh, now back towards Harry's base we still don't see a Blacksmith coming down Mr. Hazza where is it? Where is it? Let me see it. But now you can see the resources starting to stack up for Hazza. Still slowly but steadily adding in more military. Looks like he's going to be adding in more farms as well. And now a second barracks is going to be coming down for Hazza. So does he look to potentially switch into men at arms? That could be an option for him. Now, we didn't see him look to add any men at arms in the first age, but could potentially look to bring it out in the second. Men at arms, quite an effective counter uh, against the archer composition that he would know to expect from his Rus opponent. But keep in mind, as an English player, he's not going to have access to a whole lot of armor in the second age. The big thing for him is that the archers are going to be doing six damage once they've got that plus one ranged attack. We can see it's not quite in yet. Going to be going for plus one ranged defense. They do five armor, or five damage rather, as their base, but it's going to move to plus plus one will give them six attack but going up against men at arms you'll see that they've got three armor on them when he upgrades them through to the feudal age it's going to be keeping that three armor uh so the plus one's only going to take them to four so quite a lot of damage 
Oh, that was so damn loud. Famut the Great going to be attacking this boar and going to be taking himself up to 500. Uh, I was going to say 500 tax. It's 500 bounty, rather, with this. And Knight going to be taking a lot of the damage here. And indeed he does. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You guys wanted it, and now you guys get to have it. Oh my god, three sheep just chilling out over here. Yo, picked up the sheep. Yo, what, what is up with the sheep? We want the sheep. <laughs> I can't believe these two guys are leaving the sheep just to stand out here. And now a couple of spears going to be bracing down. Baz are got to be careful in this position. Archers coming out, trying to deal with the spears, doing a great job as they begin to push forward and try and take control of the center of the map. And now going to be picking up a couple of reinforcements here from Hazard. Hazard still yet to grab that plus one ranged defense upgrade. We'll take a look from the perspective of Hazard and see how he's doing. Still no blacksmith coming up from Hazard. Hazard doing the no blacksmith challenge, but at the same time going to be falling back against his enemy and going to be looking at like he might be getting thrown into a bit of a difficult spot, but at the same time, Men-at-Arms beginning to move upon these archers. These archers have got the plus one ranged armor, and the Men-at-Arms are going to be turning their attention towards the archers. At the same time, the Longbow is going to be moving up. Spearman doing a great job to chase away that early knight, and Hazza bringing out the Men-at-Arms on perfect timing. But now we, eat, we reach this position where the Men-at-Arms are going to be kited perpetually by the faster moving archers, and the archers just going to be you know, chasing away these units. You can see 1.25 movement speed versus the 1.12. He's going to be able to kite for days and finally does have that plus one attack in as well. Has a still yet to add any sort of upgrades from his own blacksmith. We can do see, we do see that the blacksmith has come in for him, but now slowly but steadily picking off the mana arms here. He's going to be able to chase down these mana arms. Indeed does, and so much damage coming out from him. A villager in the mix as well. 10 food gathering, or 10 food on this one. He manages to drop the hay down, so unfortunate for him in this position, but Hazard going to be falling back, and it's not looking pretty for our boy in blue. I say our boy in blue, but he's actually our boy in red. Uh, but uh, now a single man at arms going to be coming in from behind. Still yet to receive that plus one armor. We can see that he's researching it at the moment, so we'll be looking to get that one through shortly, but now the man at arms making their way towards the front. All of the spears getting picked off here, and the archer's going to continue trying their best to kite away. They're kiting in the wrong direction, though, as Famled the Great concedes that there might be a little bit too many men at arms there and he continues moving towards his base reinforcements continue to funnel in for family the great will take a look at his production he's got four archery rangers and only a single stable but that's all he needs as he continues to funnel these resources or funnel these units into the front line and now has a going to be continuing to struggle in this situation as we see a knight coming in with the charge a lot of damage coming out from these archers and family the great picking up a lot of great trades here at the same time i want to see what kind of upgrades we've seen from family the great do we please tell me oh, we don't have a wheelbarrow yet family the great i'm gonna start to really question your greatness after this game if you don't get that wheelbarrow we're at 12 minutes right now and not only are you losing the movement speed out of that bad boy but you're losing that extra carry capacity and that's what is so important but now archer's moving forward family the great looking to try and end this game early it seems i'm curious as to whether he's got his siege engineering we'll take a look no siege engineering coming through for him just yet a lot of villagers on wood he's done a great job of spending his resources i gotta be honest with you guys a big mistake from a lot of players is just that they don't spend their resources but family the great has done a great job at spending his resources where we're 12, 13 minutes into this game. He's got a lot of resources that are coming in. If we take a look at the income per minute right now, you can see that he's sitting on about 800 uh, wood a minute, about 1,000 or, or yeah, about 950 food a minute. And he's spending all of it very, very effectively. So great job to him. What kind of, what's the ticket scenario? I'm guessing two tickets. Oh, Famit, I'm going to have to downgrade you. You're no longer Famit the, Famit the Great. You are Famit the Good. Uh, you are no longer the great. Seven tickets is a lot of tickets, my friend. You got to think about spending those tickets. Um, if if I was in your position, oh, there we go. You just saw him spend. Uh, uh, it looks like he sold some food. So in this position, honestly, uh, where you've managed to take full control of the game as as the uh, as the Rus. I would be looking to sell a whole bunch of wood and just begin transitioning into like full early nights. It just seems to be the way uh, to, to really take control and, and look to try and finish the game early. Maybe even your opponent looks to try and get up to the castle age. You can really do a lot of damage with that. And that's something that we've seen to work for a lot of players going into that heavy mass of nights. So we'll look to see how he plays it. Siege Engineering has come through for him. A lot of archers beginning to build up here. He's got 40 archers out compared to that of Hazza. Hazza sitting on 11 longbow, but it's not looking pretty for Hazza right now. 44 villagers, 26 versus 42 villages, 49. So almost double the military population coming out from Famal the Great. He is in a very strong position, a commanding lead, if you will. But Hazard does have the food economy of a god right now. Take a look at the food economy that is coming in from, for Hazard. He is doing very well. A lot of villages back here on food. We'll take a look at how many farms he's actually got made. He's got 24 farms that have been constructed. I like the fact that he never added in that second or that fourth farm over here, despite being able to do it. He's got plenty of space in here to do it. He's just decided not to do it. Uh, but uh, now Hazard going to be under pressure as we got a bit of a ram dance coming down towards the back line here and the first ram going to be teeing off 
Archers moving forward towards this position. Keep in mind, they do have that plus one armor, the men at arms, and they're going to be looking to come out onto the front line. Apologies, that was a bit of a burp coming through. Apologies to you guys. Knight going to be tanking up this damage, and Archer's mass really beginning to build up. Hopefully, he looks to focus down these men at arms, and indeed he does. Oh my god, a second burp coming out. Drongo, what is wrong with you? You got a, you got too much gas, my friend, and second men at arms going to be going down. Look at the men at arms just being picked off here for Hazard, and he can just kite perpetually. Famut the Great doing a great job of just kiting these men at arms out, doing so much work, and now focusing down the men at arms. He should be able to split between these two, and ideally at this point, look at all the men at arms coming out from Hazard. What the heck just happened? All of a sudden, a huge push from Hazard going to be coming out in this situation, and he's picking off the long, the archers with the longbows on the back line at the same time famo just running out of steam it seems as he gets managed as he manages to get clean up somehow where did all the military units go from famo the great now it looks like famo the great going to get a downgrade from famo the great to famo the good and then all of a sudden from famo the good down to famo the mediocre at this point famo you got to pick up your game friend because hazard is taking you to school right now and you do not want to be taken to school by a 23 year old englishman it is just not fun it is just not cricket he's going to hold your hand at the crossing he's going to be like all right we can cross now the light screen and that is just not fun but Famot the Great now once again going to be pushing in plenty of units continuing to come out but now we see the macro beginning to fall apart nine tickets in the bank for Famot the Great he is not using this golden gate and this is where a lot of his power comes from it's going to be in his versatility to move into other unit lines as a result of this it means he doesn't have to gather gold it means he doesn't have to gather stone he could add in a second town center if he's so pleased but he doesn't do it at this point in time and now the mangonels the mangonels god where are the mangonels Drongo you idiot now the men at arms rather going to be continuing to push out and so much damage being done by these guys to be honest, the, the main issue isn't the damage that these man, these men, these man, oh my god, these men at arms are dealing. The issue is that all of these longbows are taking out these archers slowly but steadily on the back line, and the men at arms are just tanking up all the damage. And I think Famit the Great has finally realized that as he now tries to turn his attention towards those longbowmen. But longbowmen just doing so much work, just picking off all of these units. You can see Hazard here with great micro splitting up all of these units and just somehow manages to come out ahead. All of a sudden, we've got a concerning turn of events because now all of a sudden Hazard has somehow managed to equal equalize the military numbers. 32 military for family. 28 for Hazard, 52 villages for him, 49 for Famut. And so all of a sudden, you've seen a great comeback coming through from Hazard. And now I think Hazard's going to have to rename himself to Hazard the Great because he's managing to do quite well against Famut as he continues to push through. Looks like a horseman going to be coming out, a single rogue horseman. 800 wood in the bank right now for Famut. Eight tickets. He's managed somehow to uh, to spend some tickets. Hopefully, he continues spending tickets because that is how you play the rules with the Golden Gate. You like to make tickets. You like to spend tickets. It just helps you out so much. But he's secured up this second ball over towards the eastern flank. The question is whether Hazard looks to find it, looks to pressure it. He knows that there are resources out here to potentially gather. The question is whether he puts the one and one together. We'll check in on the upgrades for Hazza and see what he's up to. Uh, looks like he doesn't have that double broad axe. Has gone for forestry, though. Uh, we do have the wheelbarrow. We do have horticulture that have come out for him. No specialized pick at this point in time. When it comes to his upgrades at the blacksmith, it looks like at this point in time, he's gone absolutely everything except for siege engineering, something that you typically expect the English to pick up quite early. Uh, but in this situation, Hazza has decided that it's probably important to avoid that. Now we see horseman mass beginning to come out. It's going to be concerning to see horsemen coming out, but he looks like he's going to be getting onto the back line here from his opponent has a doing his best to try and run a bit of a screen there with the men at arms more men at arms going to be coming out in this position he needs to be focusing down those horsemen and that's exactly what he's doing great job there at forcing out all of the damage on those horsemen indeed he does and now going to be turning his attention towards the back line at the same time 33 archers teeing off for him and we have got ourselves just non-stop action in this situation what a tense battle that is unfolding here two more knights going to be coming up keep in mind these guys have got that extra plus one armor on them but at the same time has a has got the extra plus one pierce so he's going to be doing doing three damage a pop here to this Elu Knight, and indeed he does throw it down. Battering Ram turning its attention towards the wooden outpost, the wooden outpost, the outpost, rather, in the middle of the map. And now Battering Ram going to be looking towards the second outpost that, that is providing this network of castle bonus, and has a looking incredibly strong as he tries to take control of this central location, and indeed does it. Horseman going to get picked off on the back line. We see a couple of units being turned towards that Battering Ram, and now has a continuing to outgrow his opponent. And this is where it starts to get concerning, because Famut the Great, despite being great, still yet to grab that wheelbarrow technology still yet to grab that horticulture technology and this is where Hazard really starts to tank off because he's got all those farms safely under the town center and look at the farm economy coming through from Hazard at this point in time he has got 32 villagers gathering on those farms and you can see he is so happy right now 1500 food a minute and he is spending it easily he is not even fussed about this take a look at his production right now he's got three barracks sitting here how is he spending all this food with three barracks I wish I knew you know what I, I actually know it is because of the English men at arms having their training time reduced from 22 seconds to 15 seconds he's able to make more units with less barracks 
Very smart move there by Hazza. Just spamming out those men at arms non-stop towards this front line. And now it looks like he might even be thinking about a Castle Age. So very well played coming through from Hazza. Still yet to grab that Siege Engineering technology at this stage. He's continuing to add units on the back line. Does he go for a Castle Age? Who knows what this Hazza is thinking right now. But he is definitely thinking about victory. Because this is Golden League, baby. And that is what matters. It is all about that victory. So Hazza going to be looking to try and take out his opponent in this situation. And, uh, and the question is whether he's going to be able to do so. As he continues pushing across the map, a big archer mass coming out from Famut the Great. And you really got to wonder about Famut the Great and how great he is at this point in time. We'll take a look at his production. It looks like four archers, three stables. A huge amount of lances, or huge amount of knights, rather, uh, being made. Actually, it's a combination of knights and horsemen uh, that are coming out here from the, the stables. But just in, in this position, I feel like there just hasn't been enough stables added. Ideally, as the Rus in this position, you probably even want to have, you know, five to six stables. It enables you to have such a great shift. But now, speaking of great shifts, Hazza going to be looking to shift his way towards the east side of the map as he retreats. We continue to see it unfold as we enter the cinematic mode. And Hazza going to be looking to defend men at arms, making their way onto the back line, looking to screen on the front line. The horsemen juicing up a little bit of a longbow at the same same time getting taken out and now the men at arms going to be tanking up all that damage from the uh the the lancers on the front line bypassing a lot of that damage that is coming out towards that longbows and now has a looks to begin working on the, that archer back line you can see he's slowly but steadily picking off these units but has a going to be in a bit of trouble he may have bit off more than he can chew at this point in time because the archer mass is really starting to come out for famut the great and all of a sudden we are returning famut's status he is no longer famut the mediocre he is becoming famut the good as he continues to take out these longbowmen focusing them down one by one that's exactly what he needs to do. And all of the damage is coming out on those longbowmen. And now Hazza going to be walking away with his tail between his legs. Men at arms kind of be out here trying to do some damage. But you can see they're just struggling. And finally, Famut has realized. And he's going to continue. He'll take this to the ladder. He's at rank 66 at the moment. But you guys watch after this. Ram Famut is going to be coming out back at rank 50, rank 40. All that good stuff. Because he has learned. I actually need to be focusing down the longbowmen and not the men at arms. The men at arms don't do the damage. The men at arms just look scary. They've got big swords. They've got big shields. And they're blocking most of my damage. So if I'm actually focus down all the longbowmen it's going to be a different scenario and that's exactly what he does but now look at the mass beginning to build up for hazard in this position outpost on the front line going to get denied out by all these archers archers continue working towards the base of famut and he's really looking to be a bit more defensive in this scenario now we see more knights more horsemen beginning to make their way onto the field as well as another outpost coming down in a forward location here has a continuing to rally in more units and we see the men at arms looking to try and get ahead of the archers on the back line at the same time we hear a bit of an attack coming through has it going on multiple angles look at harry the madman he's microing baby he's micromanaging harry is doing it for the age of vampires three frogs that are out there at the same time he's still yet to go up to castle age despite very easily being able to afford it a bit earlier but uh now gonna be turning his attention towards the military units of his opponent look at the men at arm mass that is really beginning to build now for hazard it is looking quite concerning he could go age three research chad armor and his opponent is absolutely gone skis let's see how he looks to play it though he's got a lot of villagers back here on food 38 farms to his name has a, I kind of feel like it's enough farms. Like, I, I, don't, I think at this point, you, you probably made enough. Like, you don't, know, you don't need to make any more, man. That, that, that is good. But Hazard goes for some big walls right now. And I got to say, for Dry Arabia walls, these are about as good as it comes. Beautiful walls coming out from Hazard in the center of the map. Looking to control the narrative. And now going to be turning his attention towards the Wooden Fortress. It does go down with that, the line of sight from Famos. The Famos the Great going to be reduced. He's got another hunting cabin out towards this eastern position another one out towards the west as multiple hunting cabins are going to be going down over here as he looks to try and clean up these deer carcasses but at the same time has a unaware and immobile which means that he's going to be able to safely do that no need for a wooden fortress and now an outpost on the front line he's going to be going down extending out that network of castles further towards the base of his enemy and has his push slowly but steadily makes it towards his enemy's base and finally we see has reaping the rewards hunting cabin Still yet to have that wheelbarrow technology research from Famut the Great. We're 24 minutes into this game. He's dropping farms down. And when when it, when you start dropping farms down, that is when you really want to be getting wheelbarrow. You know what? You, you just want to be getting wheelbarrow full stop. But when you're making farms, you, know, you should be stopping for your wheelbarrow. Don't forget this technology. This one technology will literally change your life. And it definitely would have changed Famut's. Honestly, it would have increased his gathering so much. It wouldn't have been 50%, but it would have been close to about 30%, I suspect. But now the huge mass of men at arms begins to push forward. We'll head into the cinematic mode as Hazard looks to clash swords with his enemy. And now Hazard really intent on taking his enemy out. We see another outpost coming in. Hazard really looking to extend that, that, uh, that vision, as well as that network of castles bonus into the enemy's base. And this is where it really starts to mean business. 
business. And now you can see he's actually falling back in this position. Such a big massive men at arms going to be coming out. Look at the longbows teeing off towards his enemy. At the same time, we don't really see a lot of cavalry out. Just two units down towards the south. And this, this has been a grueling battle that we have witnessed between these two players. But now the men at arms going to be making it underneath the town center. Going to be falling back in this position at this point in time. He's going to be continuing to extend out this this uh, this network of castles. The question is whether he goes over towards this wood line. There's a lot of villagers over here to be had. And indeed, we see the network of castles being extended over towards this position. And now has a looking to try and make ends meet over towards this front. Villagers falling back. We hear attack sirens going off all over the map. But at the same time, the real battle is right here, ladies and gentlemen. Do not fret because Hazard is looking to try and finish off his opponent. He's doing it for the Age of Empires 3 players. He is looking to take control of this game. He is looking to knock Famut the Great out. He is looking to downgrade him from Famut the Great to Famut the Good to Famut the Mediocre to Famut the Poor. And the question is whether he's going to be able to do it because he is looking incredibly strong right now. Men at Arms looking to really take control in this Age 2 battle. We have witnessed ourselves. This is going to be... What are we at? We're at 25 minutes right now and there is no sign of a Castle Age coming through from either of these players. Famut the Great going to be, uh, going to be falling back on this position on the wood line all of his villages on the on the uh the the farms are also going to be taken out and there has been so much non-stop action throughout this game and now the men at arms going to be turning their attention towards what appeared to be a house for a short brief amount of time and now the longbowmen looking to try and pick that off at the same time we hear attack sirens going off somewhere else on the map there is a counter raid in the base of Hazar. he's going to be looking to try and take out the villagers Hazar on 73 villagers compared to family the great was on 38 that is absolutely huge damage coming out from Hazar. he has managed to go almost double the village account of his opponent we hear those see those raids going off at the same time has are going to be falling back towards the town center he's going to be a-okay but at the same time famut losing more and more villages he's down to 37 villages at this point just losing more and more villages he's got 24 idols his economy is in shambles he's going to need more than wheelbarrow right now to save him and this is not looking pretty for famut the great and has continues to try and overwhelm his opponent man at arms just doing a little bit of a superman swing as they continue funneling in towards these archers and this man at arm mass is just going to be more than enough to clean up these archers we hear those attack sirens going off once again, but the final knight has been killed. All of the knights have been dead. Men at arms being rallied back towards the base, and Hazard is taking absolute control of this game, and it looks like it is all but over at this point because Famut the Great is definitely going to be heading back to the drawing board with his Rus build order. Famut, if I could offer a suggestion, my friend, throw in a wheelbarrow or two. It may help you. And Famut the Great taps out. And with that, he is demoted to not only the Bronze League, but the Plastic League, uh, and uh, unfortunately loses his title of Famut the Great. Good game, well played. Fellas, make sure you check out Golden League. It's happening this weekend. 15 GMT, Saturday and Sunday. I'll catch you there. Be square or be there. Be there or be square. Let's go with that.